and welcome to the demonstration of tools for accounting in uh, the Federated Cloud. I am Zdeněk Šustr, I represent Cessnet, even though at the moment I'm not speaking to you from Cessnet premises, but rather from my home. That's because of the peculiar nature of 2020. I will be later joined by my colleague Lenka Svetlovská, who will give you more technical details on the solutions. But first of all, let me introduce the bigger picture of what we have been trying to achieve, where we come from and where we are trying to get. So to help us account for the resource consumption in a federated cloud, we have formally introduced a cloud accounting record, which we try to collect from all over the federated infrastructure. In the context of accounting data extraction, we can actually distinguish three separate layers in the infrastructure. Firstly, there are cloud managers, then we have data extraction tools, and finally, we have tools for aggregation and presentation. At the management level, we have obviously Open Nebula and OpenStack, who are the originators of the accounting data they know most of the details about their virtual machines. Then we have uh, extraction tools that can talk to the underlying managers and uh, present uh, the collected data to the aggregation layer in uh, the context of EGI, there's Apple and the EGI accounting portal on top of that. So the extractors are collecting accounting data from uh, the cloud management layer and pushing it through to the aggregation layer and finally the accounting portal displays it in some meaningful way. So far this is all well, but more recently we have decided as a community that accounting for CPU and memory usage alone was not enough and we have introduced accounting records for other types of consumption, more specifically for storage and for public IP addresses. When faced with the need to support additional accounting record types, we firstly considered uh, the one accounting export tool. We actually didn't want to go on supporting it, so we decided to discontinue it and we introduced a new tool, the GOAT, Go Accounting Tool, which is a more modern architecture and we have developed it straight away to support all the required accounting types. Another problem we were facing was Appel, which was not at the time yet supporting all the required accounting record types. And uh, to be able to use Goat and experiment with uh, the new tool, we decided to introduce a new aggregation and presentation uh, setup, which is based on Prometheus and Grafana. So we learned to redirect uh, the output from uh, the data extraction tools to Prometheus and to visualize it either directly in Prometheus or in Grafana. Meanwhile, we have replaced Open Nebula with OpenStack as the cloud manager in our own cloud at Cessnet. So we extended Goat uh, to also support OpenStack as the source of accounting data. And this is the final setup we have. And this is also what we are going to show in this demonstration. So with that, I was hopefully able to give you a good picture of what we are trying to achieve. And now I can hand over to my colleague Lenka, who is also connecting from her home and who will guide you through the second, more technical part of the demonstration. Hello, Lenka. And, uh, the demonstration is now yours. Thank you, Zdenek. Good afternoon to the audience and welcome in Slovakia. My name is Lenka Svetlovska and I am working at Cessnet for four years as a software developer. But let's talk about GOAT. This is the white GOAT shorthair. It's one of the oldest domesticated species of animal and has been used for milk, meat, fur and skins across much of the world. Hope I got your attention. I should introduce the name of the project. Goat means Go Accounting Tool because the whole Goat project is written in Go language. 
Now it's time to take a closer look at the technical solution. We start with accounting data extraction, that is the backends in Goat. For OpenEbula, Go contracts the cloud manager periodically for status of existing and recently deleted virtual machines. Cloud usage and also public IP usage data are extracted from machine details. Storage related to existing virtual machines is reported as part of the cloud usage record. Only storage not related to any particular virtual machine is reported separately through storage accounting records. In the case of OpenNebula, this is limited to images in the image data stores. For OpenStack, the approach needs to be a little different. Cloud usage records are constructed from existing virtual machines. There is no change there. However, public IPs are, in the case of OpenStack, considered in use whenever reserved by a user, regardless of whether they are actually attached to an existing virtual machine or not. OpenStack also offers more ways to consume storage independent of virtual machines. Aside from stored images, we will also want to account for shared network dives and objects in the Swift object stores. As I mentioned in the beginning, the whole Go project is written in the Go language. The pros of Go are simplicity, speed and support from a huge Go community. There are many easy-to-use libraries and tools. Go has smart documentation and an easier concurrency model than other languages. It's almost trivial to create a lightweight read called a Go routine and communicate with it via a channel. Go is able to manage thousands of concurrent reads. The Go project is divided into two main parts, the client and the server. The Go client collects information about servers, networks, users and storages. For example, the data from OpuNebula are received using the XML RPC protocol. No reliable public library handles XML RPC communication with OpuNebula, so our team implemented the Wango library to manage OpuNebula. OpenStack has its own API handled by Gopher Cloud library. Collected data are processed to the records in the Go server. The client and the server communicate via gRPC protocol supported by many languages, so the other Go clients don't have to be written in Go. The generated records have predefined structures and formats. At this moment, Go cares about cloud usage records, IP records and storage records and supports formats like JSON, XMR or templating. Let's look at how it works. The Go server is configurable with the following flex. It's running simply with an output path and address to listening to. Now the server is running, listening and waiting for jobs. Let's run clients. We have prepared OpenStack with 10 servers for two users and two storages. The Goat client for OpenStack is configurable through a configuration file or flex or both. The major is flex configuration. Configurable is also a filter. We can filter server records by start time, end time or period. Also, the client supports all OpenStack authentication ways and options. For example, username and password, token, application credentials or scope options. The client runs simply with the correct endpoint to the Goat server. Now the client collects information from OpenStack. We can also run a Go client for OpenEbula, similarly as we run OpenStack client. And here we can see that the first data are coming to the server. We can prove it in the output directory. The Goat obtains 352 cloud usage records from OpenEbula, 20 IP usage records and 10 storage usage records. The generated records are saved and consumed with Prometheus. We implemented an exporter to export data to Prometheus. During implementation, we solved the problem with the metric definition because Prometheus doesn't support non-numeric values. Finally, the string metrics like names, types and other non-numeric values 
are represented as labels. Prometheus visualizes metrics in various ways, one of that is using the browser. This visualization of metrics is very disarranged, but there is graph support with easy filtering using query expressions. For example, those are information about CPU usage with no filter, filter by one record, filter by, by global name, by instance, instance and local user ID, a sum of CPU usage for one user, and many others. Also, Grafana supports querying Prometheus, where we can visualize metrics in various ways. Thank you, Lenka. And with that, it's time for me to conclude the demonstration. Uh, this demo was originally produced for the EGI Conference 2020. It's a virtual event. Uh, it's not happening live anywhere. So you won't see us giving this demonstration in person. This video is all you have. With that, do not hesitate to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. And hopefully you found it interesting. Goodbye.